and he's going to talk about the BGMN conjecture why windows and stable pairs. Okay, thank you so much for inviting me. Yeah, yeah, let me tell you about this conjecture that uh, we've been working on with Genia Tevela, my advisor, uh, PhD advisor. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, I, will, I will be talking over C. So uh, let's consider a complex curve that's smooth and projective and of genus um, at least two. So uh, I would know by N the model space of stable uh, vector bundles that have uh, rank two and determinant a fixed uh, line bundle of uh, of R degree. If you just fix it, you just fix lambda. And uh, well, a few things about this space. You know, it's a smooth funnel. Uh, it has uh, Picard uh, number one, and uh, it, it's index two. And, and it carries a universal bundle. Maybe that's one of the most uh, you know, interesting features that you would ask of a moduli space. Uh, and uh, well, there is this conjecture that was uh, independently posed by both Narasimhan and by Belmont, Stalking, and Mukopiadia, uh, like maybe three or four years ago, that the drug category of this space should have a similar cardinal decomposition of the following form. So it should have two copies of a uh, direct category of a point, two copies of the curve, and two copies of each uh, symmetric power of the curve all the way up to G minus two, but only one copy of G minus one. Uh, so these are the symmetric powers of the curve. So a few, to give you a little bit of a backstory of uh, what, what has been known uh, so far about uh, this, uh, and also like what led to this conjecture in the first place. It's a classical result, for instance, that if you have a curve of genus two, this moduli space of stable bundles of rank two uh, and odd degree is uh, intersection of two quadrics in P5. Um, so it's a threefold and it, it, it's um, direct category uh, is uh, split like the MMA has a similar orthogonal decomposition like this. Uh, so. Uh, this is, uh, you know, this this would be like the consequence of component. You know, you always it is a funnel of, of index two, so you will always have like O O minus one, and and that there's also the drag category of the curve. The, the curve, by the way, you can think of it as the underlying curve under, over which you're considering the bundles, or also as this, you know, uh, two to one ramified cover in the uh, P one ramified on the uh, points where where the Tensor will be single for the intersection of the quadrant will be singular. Um, so yeah, of course, this is point, point, and curve, right? The, these are the track category of, of a point. Uh, now, uh, uh, more in general, um, uh, you can always embed the curve into this space. So, I mean, the drag category, of course, of the curve into this space for any curve of genus of these two. Uh, and you can do so by means of the universal bundle. You know, this there is a universal bundle. So if you take the uh, uh, the Fourier Mukai transform that gives you an embedding, Funario and Kuznetsov uh, used an approach uh, where they start with uh, hyperlytic and then prove it for a general curve, and then uh, proved it first for genus at least four in general for genus at least four, and then for genus. At least two, and so uh, in any case, you can have uh, this functor, and not only that, you actually can start a similar orthogonal decomposition like this, where again you have this will be like O minus one, so you have uh, line bundle, line bundle, and then the direct category of the curve, and then this starts. Uh, so these are three blocks that are semi orthogonal, these are admissible subcategories, and uh, you don't know. A priori, what's left? So uh, this starts a similar orthogonal decomposition. Oh, you could say there's a similar orthogonal decomposition like this, where k is this. Uh, the theta, by the way, is the ample generator of the Picard. So uh, yeah. Uh, moreover, uh, this uh, you know you have the, this uh, decomposition is point point curve. You can squeeze in another copy of the curve. Uh, you know just to, by by the by theta dual, which is still, of course, this is still the direct category of the curve as 
as a category. Uh, so uh, Belmont's and Mukopadia show that uh, for genus at least four, uh, you can you can have these four terms now. So that's I guess like looking more uh, more like the conjecture. Uh, so Lee, uh, now um, uh, Lee and Arsene Hunt proved uh, this year that uh, if if you have a non hyperlytic curve genus at least sixteen. You can embed the symmetric uh, square of the curve, and you can start a semi orthogonal decomposition like this. So, again, you have a line bundle, then C, but now you have the symmetric square. And what we show is that uh, we have the following semi orthogonal decomposition. So, we, we managed to uh, fit all the blocks, the expected blocks, in the drag category of what, what I'm calling N here. Um, so this is what uh, these are the blocks that were predicted by the conjecture. Now uh, this a priori is only the start of a semi orthogonal decomposition. I mean only this, or in other words, uh, there a priori there may be an orthogonal complement to this. We expect that that should be zero. That would be the entire DGMN conjecture that this is zero. But at least for now, uh, we, we don't know about fullness, but we know. That these blocks uh, are semi orthogonal and they are all embedded like this into the draft category. So, uh, uh -huh. uh, doesn't it contradict the last example on the previous slide? Uh, which one? This one? Uh, yes. Uh, no, I mean, here, here I'm also, uh, I also don't know if there's a semi, I mean, I, here, I know for a fact that there is a semi orthogonal complement. Uh, there this is, is only uh, A. These are different A and B. Yes, yes, yes. In this B, you have more components from the conjecture, right? Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm using just A and B. A will always you know like the ones that the blocks that we do know, and B is whatever is left. So the, the orthogonal complement. That's the notation I'm using of the theorems. Although this this B, uh, that's the one that we expect is zero. Th this one, of course, is not. But, but this one, yes, we do expect that it be zero. Um, so a few remarks about this. First, uh, these derived categories. Uh, each of these blocks cannot be decomposed further. This, it was recently shown by Yudin that uh, you know by means of uh, base lockers of uh, the uh, uh, canonical bundle, uh, actually, you, you can show that it, it cannot be decomposed. So this decomposition would be like pure and older in a way. Um, uh, also, as I said, the conjecture, the full conjecture would say that, that would state that this be full, that, the, that there should be no uh, complement to these blocks. And in fact, uh, there, if you take the K theory of modules, which I don't know much about, uh, it, it, that B should vanish. I mean, it does vanish. We know that in, 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 the, in the, sorry, not modules, uh, motives. In the motives uh, world, uh, at least in K theory, it does vanish. And by the way, that's exactly like the, the reason uh, why this conjecture was posed in the first place. So it's, it, the, its motivic decomposition is uh, compatible with this. Uh, but uh, yeah, so it would be very uh, surprising if it, if it were not zero, but we don't know how to prove it yet. Uh, and yeah, I should point out also that uh, like just a couple of days we posted this on the archive, uh, another paper by Yao and Shu uh, uh, appeared uh, proving this same result with different techniques. Um, so they go, they, they use uh, yeah, the, 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 the entire stack of bundles. So uh, I'm not going to talk about that approach because I don't know much about that. But uh, the way we do it is via modula, modula of stable pairs. And uh, 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 I'm sorry, uh, do they really have some proofs? Or for this, it, it, they prove the same. Yeah. Yeah, but. Uh... My impression was uh, that they only stated the same, but without uh, really providing proofs. Ah, uh, well, they stated. Well, maybe, maybe I should. Uh, so you believe that, that 
the, the paper doesn't actually contain a full proof, maybe, uh, I don't know. But they, they say it as a, as a theorem, maybe I should read it more carefully. I don't know. Okay. Mm -hmm. But in any case, the, it, it is correct. I mean, we have a proof, so uh, it, it, it is a, a true statement. In any way. So yeah, um, what, uh, what I will show, I will walk you through uh, the, the, the techniques that we use uh, and we, instead of considering the moduli space itself of stable bundles, uh, we, uh, what we do is uh, we use the moduli state spaces of stable pairs when you have a, a, a vector bundle and a section. And a key ingredient in that will be the theory of uh, windows um, that uh, allows you to uh, study direct categories of GAT portions. So, okay, this is like a, a huge uh, tool. Uh, I'm just gonna say a few, uh, you know, uh, guidelines about how it works and act more importantly, how we want to apply it. So yeah, there, general framework for this is, okay, well, uh, by the way, this has been talked about in the seminar, so uh, maybe uh, you, you know a lot about this. So yeah, okay, I will start with a uh, smooth, uh, I, I will just so can, I, smooth, can I just ask so. a question on the, on the uh -huh. theorem? Um, uh -huh. So, it, I mean, do you also get the same orthogonal decomposition if you look at the modular space of all vector bundles without fixing determinant? Um, I, uh, you would have to look at, at, at their paper. Uh, it's not exactly like this, uh, uh, but I, I believe uh, once you once you fix the vector bundle and once you require that they be uh, stable, uh, then then that implies this decomposition. Uh, but uh, but but I'm not sure how, how it works in the, in the entire stack. Bundles. I think you still have to fix. No, I mean, uh, sorry, I meant stable bundles, but not fixing the determinant. No, I don't. I, I don't think they, they do it that way. I think they they go about uh, 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 not using the stability condition and then not, not imposing it and then impose it. But uh, yeah, I'm not an expert in their uh, approach, but. Uh, uh, but at, at the end, of the end result is the same. So yeah, uh, maybe, yeah, maybe I'll, I'll also want to take a look at their approach. Wouldn't it be just vibration over of the Jacobian? I mean, this decomposition. I don't know. What, what do you mean? I mean, the two different fix, fixings of this determinant means uh, twist by an element in the Jacobian of the curve, right? Yeah. So it's everything fiber of a uh, Jacobian. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. No, I think they do fix a uh, 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 determinant. But uh, uh, for, for... For instance, uh, this line bundle theta, is it defined on the uh, modular space without fixing the determinant? Mm. No, I, I'm not sure. So you have to, well, okay, you have to choose a generator of the Picard. So you would have to write the Picard group of the family. But, uh, yeah, but my impression is that if you just uh, apply out equivalences which are given by the Jacobian of the curve, then you would and at least this decomposition with this out equivalence, you will get the composition of the whole way. Um, th there are definitely some subtle points about that. For instance, if you twist by a point of order two, you get the same determinant. So you need to be careful about these twists. Okay, you 
mod out the, the points of order two. Anyway, yeah, I, mean, I, I mean, the question is if this decomposition is, is, is given by objects which are equivalent with respect to this two torsion of the Jacobian. So, so. Yeah, probably not. No, I, I think they do pick the uh, Yeah. Well, so, so do we, by the way. We want to fix a, a line bundle. Of course, if you, you know, uh, change 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 it for another uh, uh, odd line bundle, that uh, spaces will be isomorphic to each other. But we still want to fix it. Okay. More for comments. Okay, so um, I want to use uh, GAT uh, or more specifically Windows into GAT. So yeah, I'm going to start with a, a affine, oh, sorry, with a projective or over affine variety. Think of it projective maybe or affine most of the time. Um, uh, that is smooth. Uh, let's just not uh, worry about smoothness. Uh, and uh, I have an action, and then uh, I'm, I want to consider the, the GAT quotient uh, when, once I fix an equivariant line bundle, an ample line bundle uh, with, with an action. Of GAT. So uh, this is uh, the GAT quotient, and um, well, uh, I, I want to introduce. I need to introduce uh, what weights are. So this is like roughly speaking, like imagine you have a vector bundle over X, and imagine that you have an action on that vector bundle by the by G, by the same uh, group that acts on X, that you extend it. But, but, um, uh, there's an action uh, extended to, uh, to the entire F. So if you have a one parameter subgroup, so let's imagine that C star now is acting on the, on, on the vector bundle. And then if every time you have a fixed point um, by that one parameter subgroup, if it fixes the point, it has, it has no no, no choice but to act on the fiber. So it will have to act by, uh, you know, it, it will, it, once you diagonalize, it will be like T to the D, uh, T to the D prime, et cetera. And then uh, those Ds are uh, what, what's called the weight of F oh, respect, with respect to that one parameter subgroup. So, um, well, uh, let's assume that uh, GX freely on and the semi-stable lattice. That's that's going to be the case uh, for our purposes anyway. So um, the quantization theorem um, states that um, if you have an object and the direct category of X, well, the, and the G equivariant direct category of X. Um, so basically, what what I want to what I want to say is that. Um, uh, these two things are equal. So uh, here, on one, on one hand, I have the G equivariant sheet cohomology on the entire stack, which is X, and this is on the GIT quotient. And what prevents me from saying that these two things are equal is that this only accounts for the semi-stable lattice. So uh, the theorem says that these two things will be equal uh, as long as you have some control on what's going on in the unstable lattice. And well, the technical condition is that you have to measure the weights of such object. Uh, so the way you do that is you take a stratification, a, a Kempf-Ness stratification of the unstable lattice, which will come with some strata. And, and each strata is defined by, by, by one parameter of groups that fix some lattice. And, uh, and if you, the, the integers that will uh, govern the, uh, you know, the conditions will be uh, the weights of the determinants of the normal bundle to that strata, uh, which is uh, always positive, by the way. Um, so, uh, yeah, the weight condition is that if uh, you have an object uh, that on each of these strata has weights that are less than its, uh, you know, Eta, uh, then uh, these two things are equal. 
So this is very useful. It's telling you that if you want to compute uh, commonality downstairs, you can do it upstairs as long as this condition is satisfied. Uh, and uh, more generally, actually, if you fix some integers that were alpha, then uh, uh, you can say, well, okay, if if f and k are uh, satisfy these inequalities, I mean, the weights of them satisfy these inequalities, then uh, homomorph, I mean, morphisms in the drag category of the, on, on either drag category will be the same. Here, f and k are, by, uh, by these, I mean the restrictions to the semi-stable lock, sort of the descent of the semi-stable lock, uh, uh, to, to uh, the descent to the JT portion. I'm, I'm just, uh, I just want the GX really here just because I want this to be a statement on the direct category of this, the variety itself, but otherwise it would just be a statement on the stacky, you know, GIT portion. And, uh, and well, by the way, like this is basically the same as this. If you, if you think of like HOM, what is, what is HOM? It's basically like R HOM, which is basically like R gamma of, are you know curly hum and that can be computed by means of like you know f dual tensor k if everything derived and so on so uh, but yeah but um, uh, this is what it is and well uh, the windows theorem says uh, actually uh, more than that uh, if you uh, define uh, uh, trying to a uh, subcategory pool triangulated uh, of the um, uh, of the entire G equivariant category of X consisting of objects uh, with these weights uh, in each you know stratum satisfy satisfying this condition that the weights are in this interval. Uh, then one when you restrict, uh, you will have an equivalence of categories like this. Uh, this is the window of set categories defined as a subcategory of this uh, explicitly by the weights conditions, and it restricts to to the entire uh, derived category of the quotient. The previous statement is telling you that this is uh, fully faithful, that the restriction is fully faithful, and uh, this is telling that it's actually uh, essentially subjective. And uh, well, not only that, you can uh, you can put uh, the, the window category you can put it inside the, the entire drug category like this where uh oh to the right and to the left you have things that are well defined in terms of weights and that are also uh, only uh supported in the unstable logs and by the way w are integers w alphas are integers that you can choose so if you choose different integers, you'll have a different subcategory as seen here but it, nevertheless, it will still uh, restrict to the whole subcategory, to the whole your category of GFT portion. Um, and of course, if you, if you change this, you can sort of slide this uh, across, you know, the this drag category, so you can move your window in, in the directions that that in as many directions as uh, strata you have. So you can you can choose your W's here. Uh, the the Easiest example is when you have a PM, you know, the projective space is a uh, GAT portion of the affine space. Up here in the, in the affine space in the G equivariant category or C star equivariant category, uh, uh, you have only one line bundle, but you can linearize it in infinitely many ways, as many as Z. So this would be a full exceptional collection. And uh, if you restrict to, uh, weights uh, between a range of, uh, let's say from zero to N, so N plus one of them, that uh, will restrict to, to the entire drug category of uh, EN. Uh, and you can, of course, change uh, W. And, and not only that, if you want to put it here inside, if you want to put this piece inside the, the, this category, you can also, uh, you can also write it like this, and these are supported on the origin, which is the only unstable uh, locus of this GAT portion. Um, well, there's uh, there's uh, more to that. Uh, if you uh, well, if you choose different linearizations, of course, you are going to end up with different GAT portions. So, how do these compare to each other? 
uh, well, uh, you, basically what you need to do is um, the window category is identified with a subcategory of the whole geoprivariant category of X. Uh, and and, and uh, the way it's defined is by literally by object that have uh, weights on a given interval. And that's your window. So if you have another uh, JT quotient, uh, which will have, a, for which you can define another window category on its own right. If one of the windows is strictly bigger than the other, then well, that, that embeds one of the categories of the, one of the JP quotients into the other. So, um, and, well, in order for that to work, you need, uh, you will need the following set. You need that the, the wall crossing is balanced, which basically means that, uh, you know, you can build so let, let's say that L0 is the wall, and then um, L plus and minus are, uh, are uh, you know, two, uh, two uh, uh, G linearizations uh, living in either side of the wall. And then let's say that you can build a strata from the strictly semi-stable locus of the wall, and then uh, so, so that the strata appearing here come from the same, uh, you know, same fixed loci that are fixed by the same one parameter set groups, but uh, either if, if you move to one side of the wall or the other, you, you have to choose either the ascending or the descending manifold. Uh, so so it will be destabilized by either by one parameter set one one parameter set group or the opposite one. So if you can do that, so meaning the the, the wall crossing is balanced, uh, then. Uh, uh, then, uh, well, uh, first of all, uh, if if the weights condition is satisfied in between, let's say, let's say first that you have uh, two objects A and B, uh, if if you want to use quantization from from uh, for uh, for the purposes of this JT portion and for the purposes of this JT portion at the same time, well, you can do that as long as both uh, you know weight conditions are satisfied. And uh, if uh, the if one window if one window category is consistently uh, wider than the other, well, that that makes an embedding of, uh, of the direct categories of the different geo portions. And uh, and yeah, uh, it turns out that uh, the, uh, that will be controlled by the weights of the uh, of the uh, canonical uh, bundle. On, on, on X, because the, the weights of this will be basically the difference between the, between uh, the A theta. Here, sorry, here's the type, it should be W plus eta, and then here W plus, plus eta as well. So eta is the, it's really the, the width of, of the window. And this is telling you that, well, if this happens, then you can uh, uh, embed one category the other, just by considering a smaller window. Uh, well, uh, I'm not saying that if, if, if these uh, weights are all zero, then the categories are equivalent and so on. And, and just let me take you to the uh, previous slide here. Uh, I'm just saying that if you only, only care about uh, morphisms from A to B and not from B to A, this is already pretty useful because um, uh, you, you both you, you don't need to check a two-sided condition. It's on, on each side is a one-sided condition. So uh, this is the quanti just the quantization theorem, mainly this. Sorry, not this one. Uh, this one uh, applied uh, for both the GIT portions. Uh, and that, sorry, that when you are in this situation, when you can verify this numerical condition, then uh, you have this, uh, namely uh, homomorphisms on one GAT portion and on the other are the same. Or you could say uh, these morphisms, they cross the wall through the window. That's, I guess, what way it's called window. It, it, it crosses all the way to the other side of the GAT wall. OK. Uh, so an example of this is uh, when you have a standard flip. So let's say again you have a, a, 
an affine stage, but then uh, C star only acts, uh, I mean, it acts uh, with different weights um, on, uh, on either side, uh, on one half and the other. So, uh, uh, and let's choose these linearizations. Uh, what you get here is on the wall. So if you choose uh, the linearization to be just OX, that will give you a singular state, which is uh, this one. Uh, so it's uh, uh, it's like the, the um, it's a cone of the of the segregate embedding. And, uh, and and well, what what's the what's the unstable locus for either side? Now, if you if you if you move a little bit to the right and to the left of the wall, uh, first of all, the fixed locus is just the origin. And then the, the unstable locus is built up from the fixed locus. If you move to one side, then uh, the if you move to this linearization, for, for example, uh, the uh, the unstable locus will be the origin times uh, this space, so a m plus one, and on the other side it will be a n plus one. So uh, so the 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 fixed locus by C star is the same, but you have to uh, you have to see on either side of the wall. You have to see who is attracted as, uh, to to the origin, either uh, when uh, when t goes to zero or when t goes to infinity, so to speak. Uh, and then, uh, well, you can you can do the computations. You can measure how how uh, how wide the windows are. And well, on the left hand side, you have this, uh, these windows, uh, I mean, this interval, uh, and the right hand side, you have this one. And then, well, uh, for example, if n is at, uh, at most m, then this one uh, embeds into that of this one. So the entire GI category here crosses the GIG wall through the window and embeds into the GI category of this guy. And yeah, and I should say, uh, there, there's several uh, applications of, of Windows. Uh, for example, uh, uh, Genia and Castrovet, they show uh, lots of uh, Manning uh, uh, conjecture. Uh, I, I did some, uh, some work on uh, vanishing of the chunks. You, if, you only care, if you only care about uh, uh, sheet cohomology, then you can, uh, you can still use uh, you know, quantization from the reduction. So uh, that, that's what I did. I showed some vanishing of bundles, namely about vanishing on some JT portion. So th there's a lot of things that you can do with Windows. And what we will do is apply it to um, moduli uh, of table groups. So we are not on our moduli of uh, bundles yet. The space N, we are not considering it yet. But instead, uh, we will deal with moduli spaces of uh, stable pairs. So again, uh, I, I have uh, the square of genus at least two. And now, well, okay, I, instead of considering the usual uh, uh, stability condition for uh, rank two vector bundles, I'm going to consider vector bundles rank two with a section so a pair. And I tweak uh, a bit the stability condition by a number uh, sigma. Um, that is a, it's a real number. And uh, and, and also the condition will, will vary. Uh, the inequality that needs to be satisfied is different depending on whether L was the vector, uh, the line bundle uh, that, that had a fee or not. Well, uh, so if you consider these modular spaces instead, well, they have been studied. Uh, actually, Thaddeus has a very nice article with, where he describes uh, basically all about these spaces. So, well, first of all, there exists such moduli space. Uh, well, uh, sigma, in order for, for the space not to be empty, sigma has to be between zero and v over two. But okay, the, these moduli spaces ex exist. Uh, here I'm fixing, uh, I'm fixing lambda, I'm fixing the, the determinant. Um, and, uh, and, and, and you can, well, the, the, the stability condition is governed by this, you know, one-dimensional parameters, sigma, so this number that uh, that, you, that you can move along. And uh, as you move sigma, you will, of course, hit different uh, GAP chambers. And the chambers uh, 
are what were called here M0, M1, and 2 And uh, between these two, there's a GIT wall and so on between these two. So uh, these two are related by every every two consecutive are related by GIT wall crossing. Um, and uh, yeah, and also you can think about it as uh, they are by they are by last you know, that there's a resolution here mapping to uh, both uh, consecutive uh, uh, spaces like this. Uh, maybe more interestingly, um, and actually this is uh, what we are going to use eventually, that the last of these spaces, it carries a map to uh, the N space. So this is the space we actually care about. Uh, it is uh, the space of stable pairs. It's not, not pairs, sorry, it's stable uh, vector bond. Uh, this is like a forget uh, map. Like uh, you, you just uh, remember the uh, the bundle. You forget about the section. But uh, for example, if D is exactly two G minus one, then this is a birational map. This, uh, every such bundle has only one section, so it's, not, it's uh, generically, uh, you know, uh, injected. Um, uh, okay, yeah. Um, so yeah, I told you that every uh, two uh, consecutive ones are related by, uh, well, of course, by GAT while crossing, but also if you want to see them like the, like this, um, uh, the, 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 the wall crossing, uh, it, they are also related by a flip like this. So um, you can get from one to the other in this fashion. Uh, these DWIs, plus and minus, these are bundles over the symmetric uh, power of the curve. And, uh, and well, okay, this represents the, this parameterizes the bundles that are in this moduli space and not in this moduli space. So, and, and, and the other way around, like the ones that, that satisfy one stability condition, not the other. And then, well, this resolution contains a, a, you know, a product uh, over uh, the symmetric uh, power. Okay, uh, and more more stuff that I should mention about these spaces is that um, if you have an effective divisor uh, on uh, on the curve, if you consider the lattice of pairs here, for instance, that uh, vanish at that divisor, uh, then uh, then uh, that still gives you uh, an embedded. Uh, um, um, a smaller space that is on its own right, another uh, moduli space of this time, but for a different, of course, for a different uh, determinant. And we, you have to choose by minus two d. And by the way, also the the index uh, jumps by by, by alpha by, by the degree. The the divisor you're you're, you're considering. Uh, also, uh, well, very important if you have uh, these vector bundles, the MIs, uh, the, the ones in the in the uh, JD chambers, uh, they carry a universal bundle uh, and the product with the curve. Uh, and the universal section, is this, that's the way it's supposed to be because it's parametrizing bundles with sections. Also, uh, it can be written as a JD quotient. Each of them can be written as a JD quotient. Uh, and, and, and these guys uh, are written as a free GIT portion. Um, and also, uh, if you restrict uh, your universal bundle to a point, uh, then, well, that's, uh, well, by how this is defined, the, the, this will vanish precisely at, at a space that is, uh, that is an, uh, like a previous, you know, uh, uh, moduli space like, this of this sort with a with a different with a smaller device, which actually this will turn out to be very useful. Um, so yeah, how, what, how is the uh, Windows machinery going to play out here? And uh, between two consecutive MIs, um, each of them uh, can be written as GAT portions of the same space but with different linearizations, and they are separated by a wall. And then uh, if you have two, two objects, um, so let's say that you, you're on MI and on MI minus one, you have a couple objects that both descend from the same uh, 
both descend from the same object uh, on X. So here I, I or restrict from the same object objects on X. So here um, I, I'm denoting by also by A and B the restrictions, and these are the objects on X with with an so they are in the uh, G equivariant category of X. Um, uh, well, if you can verify the two uh, uh, the two inequalities that the quantization theorem requires you to verify, then you will be able to cross the wall from one side to the other. So, if, um, uh, for example, if, if you can verify that, yeah, and if from uh, from A to B there's no morphism in one of these spaces, then there's also no more sense in the other space. So that uh, tells you something about similar orthogonality, for instance. You, uh, if you want to check orthogonality in M2, you may check it on M1, for example, as long as uh, these are bundles that are, or objects satisfy the weights condition. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm not going to think much about how these conditions are done in, in our case, but um, let's just say that roughly uh, the way uh, you do it is uh, uh, you have to, uh, well, the, 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 the Kempfner certification of the unstable lock is relies on, uh, you know, one parameter set groups and fixed lock I by these one parameter set groups, which ends up being. Uh, the, the ones that you need to care about are the ones that are in the strictly semi-stable lattice of the wall. And these are bundles that, uh, that, that split uh, with, with a section of, the, of one of the two bundles. So that, that's, uh, the, that's the semi-stable log height on the wall separating one mi and mi minus one. And, and, the, and, the, and the C star that fixes it is, is a diagonal group acting on uh, on L by a, by a scalar and on K by a scalar, but by different scalars. Um, okay, uh, so um, uh, one one cool thing we can do uh, by using the uh, Windows machinery is that, well, uh, as long as this condition is satisfied between D, G, and I, uh, there will be a fully faithful embedding uh, between the drive category of the left hand side and that of the right hand side. So it will cross through the window. And well, not only that, the, the Windows theorem also tells you, maybe I didn't state it like that, but it also tells you what else is missing. So if you want to build up the bigger category out of the smaller one, you need to add um, well, this, this stuff. And, and they are copies of, uh, in this case, the uh, symmetric uh, power of the curve. And this has to do with the fact that, that what, uh, what uh, distinguishes these two spaces are some bundles over CI. So you can imagine that, you know, you uh, pull it back and you pull, pull back that category and embed it into, into, for instance, this one. I'm sorry, uh, uh, is, isn't it uh, the standard uh, semi-orthogonal decomposition for a flip? I mean, isn't it just well, a flip and the standard same yeah. position for it? Uh, yeah, well, OK. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah, that's, I guess, another way to see it. This uh, Windows uh, uh, theorem kind of recovers uh, the, for example, OK, if it's a flop, then it will be an equivalence of categories. Uh, if it's a flip, yes. Yeah, OK, yeah. Maybe you don't need windows uh, for that particular one. Actually, uh, this decomposition we won't uh, use uh, like that. Uh, it's still um, uh, it, 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 it's, it will still play a role. The fact that uh, this is embedded here, at least uh, to understand how it works. But uh, okay, these blocks we I will not use, but it already hints at. Well, kind of why you know the symmetric power of the curve uh, shows up in the final you know uh, result. But yeah, maybe maybe you could do this just with with, with flips. I think. Yeah. Um, so okay. Uh, 
let's recall uh, what the moduli spaces are. Here, uh, M0, and, and I wrote, uh, it's written like this because uh, M0 is kind of special because it's just a projective space and this is just a blow up. So it's like a non-interesting clip, I guess. Uh, but, uh, and then and we have the clips uh, between M1 and M2, and 2 and M3, and, uh, and you can see each of these as GAT wall crossing. There's a wall in between here and so on. And the last one has an interesting map to M. So, um, well, the first two spaces are uh, pretty easy. Uh, this one is just a projective space, as I said, and M1 is a blow up of, uh, of that projective space with an embedded copy of the curve. And if, uh, as I said, if the degree is exactly t minus one, then this is a uh, birational morphism. And also, um, uh, more importantly, is that uh, this uh, uh, pullback is actually fully faithful. So, and at the end of the day, um, the, the, the bundles that we will consider here will map to the bundles that we have, that we will have here and, and via this fully faithful function. So uh, for, our, for a bit, let me not uh, talk much about N itself, but, uh, but maybe you can trust me that at the end of the day, what I, what I, what I want to consider is the drag category of this guy or actually MI, all the MIs, because as I said, um, and the, the category is embedded here and so on. M2 is embedded in M3 and so on. Uh, as long as, uh, you know, some uh, condition between I and T are satisfied, but in, in, for our purposes, the cases, the cases that we care about, uh, that will be satisfied. So, yeah, okay, let's go back to M1. Uh, M1 is uh, this uh, not so difficult space, it's a blow up of uh, BR on an um, uh, embedded copy of the curve. Uh, so, well, M1, of course, has a universal bundle, uh, because that's part of the theorem by Thaddeus. Uh, and every time you have a, an object on the product, you want to define the Riemann high transform. Uh, so, yeah, let's just pull back, tensor, and push forward. Uh, so that defines a functor uh, from the curve to M1. And as you can imagine, uh, this functor is fully faithful. So that's uh, the typical thing you would want to prove. Um, and yeah, in order to show full faithfulness, uh, you have to do some computations and on M1. Uh, how do you do that? Well, you have a bundle of all three. You only need to check it for uh, for uh, space spreadsheets. sheets. So um, in I'm sorry. Uh, uh -huh. Uh, is it clear how this functor is uh, related to the uh, fully faithful functor that you get from the blow up representation of M1? Um, is, it, is, is the kernel supported on the exceptional divisor of the blow up? For instance. Um. I mean, the, the, the blow up representation also gives you a bunch of functors, uh, a bunch of. Yes, yeah, yeah, but we don't want to use that one. Um, uh, we, we, we don't want to do that because what, what we want to do is sort of uh, uh, use the, because, okay, this F, uh, there's also an F here and they both descend from the same guy upstairs because the same guy. So we don't want to use uh, the blow up functor. I think this is a different functor. Uh, we we want to use it like functorially uh, uh, defined from the from the universal bundle that descends uh, from the object that restricts to the universal bundle both here and here and then also here and here and so on. So I don't think it's, it's, it's the same one. Yeah, of course. Uh, but, uh, and that for your purposes, it's much more natural to use F, but uh, still the question, yes. the question makes sense. What is the relation ah. by F and the blow up functor? Um, 
the block. Uh, oh, like you mean like the pullback from here to here? Uh, I, I mean, uh, for this blow up representation, you have the exceptional divisor, which is a projective bundle over C. And so you can pull back from C to this projective bundle and then push forward to M1. Yeah. Um, yeah, we do use it, uh, the, the AR related, because, uh, because, yeah, and in our computation, um, uh, we, we we do use, for example, the fact that uh, that, that this that this functor is uh, fully faithful um, to show that our functor is fully faithful. So I don't recall at the moment uh, what exactly the relationship is, but may, maybe maybe in what follows. Um, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe it will show up because uh, yeah. So yeah. It, uh, what, what what we need to do, for example, if we want to show uh, for the faithfulness, is that the uh, the uh, cohomology in the right hand side. I mean, yeah, you can see this cohomology um, uh, matches the one on the left hand side, which is known. It's just zero most of the times, and uh, it's only non-zero when x is equal to y. So this is what you need to compute and. What you use is um, the uh, uh, the, uh, the these special resolutions. So um, maybe th this has to do with your question. Uh, the the universal the universal uh, section um, uh, of the universal bundle. Uh, well, when you when you restrict to x, uh, this will have uh, the, uh, this will basically resolve the locus that uh, this uh, pr, uh, which is basically you know m zero, but m zero with with a different m zero of a different uh, uh, determinant. So so the usual lambda, but then twisted by minus two x. Um, and, and, and for instance, if you, if you want to compute cohomologies of these guys, uh, you can you can do a similar thing for Fy and then tensor the two things together and and then compute hyper of the, of the of the entire thing. So if, using like the spectral the cohomology spectral sequence, um, if you want to show that, for example, cohomology vanishes, you can show that all the other terms in the sequence vanish after you apply you know, the trap puncture of the global sections. Uh, and then your your i vanishes and and yeah and in order to do that in order to show that uh, you do use for instance that that the functor of uh, uh, of the blow up that one uh, vanishes so I forget now the, the exact relationship but uh, I can look it up maybe maybe I'll, I'll check it later. And, and um, how do these uh, PR uh, corresponding to X and PR corresponding to Y, how do they intersect? Yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's like zero most of the time, but if, if X is equal to Y, then you have to have to do some computation. Um, I don't understand. Uh, are they in uh, general position, these two linear subspaces? Uh, subspaces? Uh, so no, they, they don't intersect. They, they don't intersect if, if 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 x and y are are, are different. But ah, if, uh, yeah. Don't they really? I mean, uh, do I understand correctly that they project to linear subspaces in M zero? Just linear subspaces of co-dimension two. Yeah. Is that right? I think there are fibers of the projective bundle over the curve and different fibers correspond to ah, the x and y. Ah, ah, okay. Okay, yeah. okay. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and, and the cool thing is that uh, every time you have this uh, uh, fiber over C uh, of the, the even the symmetric power, the fibers will be this, this kind of also M, so also such moduli spaces, but of a different, with a different determinant. So, and, and that's actually what's used uh, later. So, um, uh, well, first of all, I, I told you that uh, there are, um, 
there are embeddings like this, well, this is satisfied, satisfied all, provided that the GP is at most uh, two G minus one. So you can imagine that uh, if you have the curve embedded in M1, then M1 is embedded in M2 and so on. Well, uh, you may expect that this will happen. And it does, in fact, it does happen that the, uh, the functor, the, the Fourier Mukai functor of F uh, for the universal bundle on MI, uh, that always uh, for each I, uh, it provides a, a fully faithful uh, functor. Uh, now, uh, this is, uh, it, it's not just like saying, okay, uh, Okay, you have the curve embedding in one and, and one embedded in two. You also, I'm also claiming that it, it's that the uh, that there's a functor like this defined by f by its own f by, by, by the universal bundle on n i, and that's uh, that's achieved by the windows computation. So the the way uh, show this is uh, saying okay, uh, if I want to compute uh, uh, you know, uh, morphisms on M i, I can as well compute it on M i minus two because the weights condition is satisfied. Um, and then, okay, uh, you can uh, you can actually do uh, something analogous for the symmetric power of the curve. So um, you want you want to run into a computation like this where you have to compute something with uh, you know like f fx tool to the red y and uh, that's for for the curve but if you want the curve squared then you may want something like uh, fx1 tensor fx2 something like that and uh, the right I'm choice sorry, for such I, bundle may I sorry? Uh, sorry may i interrupt uh, in the sure. proof, uh, in the proof page mm -hmm. uh, previous page the, uh, I, I think i have this similar like confusion as Sasha, mm -hmm. that is this PR, this R is not the R before, it's actually R. Like oh, yes, M0 sorry. M0 yes. Uh -huh. No, it's, uh, but yeah, like, uh, yes, it, it's D minus, D plus D minus uh, Imagine, four yeah. in this case. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. So they, 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 the, the, the uh -huh. previous one was like, uh, yeah, sorry, it should be like R minus D. One was D, D plus G minus two, this is D plus G minus four. This is uh, okay. it's a smaller. So, so it's a dimension of M zero minus two. Yes. Yeah, yes. Okay, yeah. It's like an it's like another M zero, like an M zero mm -hmm. of, of a different lambda of lambda minus two. I see. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Maybe R prime should have been better. So yeah, and, and yeah, and maybe it will be more clear in the next slide. So yeah, here you you, you want to make a choice of a. Uh, of a, of a bundle that will have fibers that sort of look like maybe for the, the tensor product of, uh, of F, if X, if Y, et cetera. And the, yeah, and the right choice is uh, the following. Uh, that you, you have the, the symmetric uh, power is, you know, a, a symmetric quotient. This quotient is nice, it's, it's flat, it's finite, and um, it's smooth. Uh, and then, um, so on C, well, C, times your 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 moduli space uh, the, on C uh, you have the, the F right the universal bond so you pull it back through each of the projections then uh, tensor all of them together and then uh, on that you have a, you have an action of the symmetric uh, group by, by acting on the on C alpha and also on and on the on, on the components of, of this tensor product, so you take the equivariant push forward, and and it gives you this uh, bundle. Um, it, it is a bundle, and the, and, and and that uh, gives you a Fourier Mukai kernel. Uh, so um, uh, and that and that gives you a functor. So you want to show now that these guys are fully faithful. And in fact, uh, they are. So again, let's assume that uh, the degree is at most two g minus one. Then this is fully faithful. Um, so this gives you a, a copy of the symmetric power of the curve into the derived category of mi, where i from alpha on. And
and how you show it is well as i said um well you wanted that that the, that the restrictions to two points here uh, be where uh, something like tensor product is not quite that but uh, it's a deformation so you have uh, uh you can play with uh, uh semi-continuity so for example if something like this uh has no cohomology this guy will have no cohomology and so on uh, and and again, you have Kozul resolutions like this. This, I guess, is what I should have written uh, before. Like uh, the the section here, um, the universal section, when you restrict to a point x, what that resolves, or the vanishing log is that is an, another uh, you know moduli space like this, but with a different uh, with a different uh, determinant. Um, and, and 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 yeah, and, and of course uh, you, you can you can use windows. So um, this, for example, is embedded into an alpha, but then you you can you can do computational on an alpha and alpha plus one and so on by using windows. So windows is like the key tool here that, that we use. So okay, I, I want to put all these uh, uh, blocks together, and as I said. Um, uh, I didn't want to worry about n itself until the very end because we have this uh, push pullback that is uh, fully faithful and, and it, it sends everything that we want to everything that we want. So at the end, what we, what we prove is this. This is what the semi orthogonal decomposition looks like. Um, we have possibly, as I said, a semi orthogonal complement to this. Uh, and we have all these blocks. Um, each block uh, C alpha. Is given by by this Grimkai transform. If alpha is one, it's just the universal bundle. And uh, yeah, and on the yeah the first and third line, I have put the uh, the even uh, you know powers of the curve and and the odd on the other one. Uh, maybe. Uh, something remarkable is that uh, these guys if you look at one uh, if you look at each row separately uh, they are actually orthogonal so you can reorder if you want uh, yeah also yeah I, I, i'm not saying here that uh, uh, that uh, how how far you, you can go but uh, i'm not writing it but you can go all the way up to uh, g minus two and then g minus one appears only once and and it will and you can make it appear actually in any of these four lines. But this is what the uh, what the, the, the what the semi orthogonal blocks look like. So yeah, um, this is this is what I want to say. If you want to check some uh, references uh, here, it's our paper uh, with Jenya and I, and then there's also some other uh, relevant. Uh, uh, Stuff with uh, windows, uh, multi competitions, uh, uh, what led to the conjecture itself, and of course, Tagger's uh, work on unstable pairs. So, yeah, uh, that's it. Thank you. All right. Now, thanks, uh, Sebastian, for this beautiful talk. Any questions to our speaker? <clears throat> uh, can I ask? Uh, so uh, um, you you talked about windows, right? And uh, mm -hmm. to to make sense of that, you need to represent M i as a quotient of some x by some group G. Yeah. So pro probably I missed this, but uh, what is x and what is G? Yeah, actually, I, I can set that under the rug, but um, it's also part of of, of this construction by factors. Uh, you uh, you want to use uh, like the quad scheme, uh, the quad scheme of, uh, of bundles, and uh, well, you're not also need to add a section, so you have you put like uh, times uh, c to some, some power. Okay, if, if first uh, you need to sort of rigidify the picture. So uh, um, by this remark here. Uh, you can always choose the, 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 your determinant to be as large 
a, a degree if, if you want, because because uh, small uh, modular spaces with smaller degree uh, it will will embed here, so it will be a slice on your on your bigger on your modular space with bigger determinant. And then for these guys, uh, you do the the quad scheme, and then uh, the because the the uh, such bundles, if if, D, if the determinant is big enough, uh, then uh, they, they will be globally generated. So uh, so let's say you have uh, your your quad scheme times you know uh, a, a power of a, a, you know PC chi, where chi is the, the number of sections that, that each of these models will have, and and and, and that and that's uh, that's x. And then uh, g is PGL PGL chi, where chi is again the, the number of sections of of such of the bundles one to be defined. Uh -huh. So if I understand correctly, you have uh, many such representations, right? Yes. And um, uh, all your results uh, are independent on the choice of such a representation, or do you choose some specific one? Um, do you mean independent of how I embed it like this, or, or if maybe there's another? Uh, so, uh, no, I mean that um, to. Uh, as you explained, you, you can represent your MI as a quotient in several different ways. And you have some results uh, about uh, windows. Uh, do you use arbitrary representation of that type or do no, you- No, 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 I, I use a particular one. Ah, so uh, which is the one that you choose? Oh, th that one, like, uh, so the, the one, the one by, th I, I'm not sure if I understand uh, the, the question. Uh, oh, wait, sorry. Uh, Maybe like, it was like about the choice of window. Huh? Was it GAT construction or? Yeah, yeah. Third second? Yeah, yeah. For the GAT construction, right? Uh, no, I, I use the GAT construction that Tadus gives. Uh, I, 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 it, uh, the way we prove it, uh, 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 it uses that particular construction. I don't know if there's another way of doing it, but I mean, this one cannot, but well, I'll just turn on the way. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. So can, can I ask, I mean, can one also use this, all these MIs going backwards in order to try to prove that the orthogonal complement is empty? But you may lose some information on the on, to the other side. They are not. There is not uh, fully faithful from right to left. I mean, it, it, I mean in theory, right? There ah. can't be no. I mean, I mean, each MI has a semi-orthogonal decomposition where the MI minus one um, appears, and we I think I guess we also sort of have the orthogonal complement, maybe not as explicitly. Ah. And so, I mean, you know, can you rephrase the expectation that the com complement is empty? First of all, I mean, can you rephrase this as some um, semi-orthogonal decomposition on mg minus one being everything, and then trace it back all the way to m one and m naught? Well, uh, so one thing uh, in on mg minus one, this is not everything. Uh, 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 there, there actually is more stuff. Because we have a, we only have a, you know, a, a map, and actually maybe, maybe that's one of the reasons why we only have uh, an embedding, uh, a subcategory of here. Because this one embeds here, but here we do expect to see more stuff. So maybe we need to manage that stuff. Because uh, the, the blocks that we, that we built on MT minus one, they definitely do not generate everything on MG minus one, but on M they may. I mean, I guess my question is, do you have any um, decomposition of MG minus one where, you know, the, the pullback of 
pb of n is one piece and you can describe the complement. Uh, sorry, mg minus one as the pullback off. I mean, uh, right, mw, right? So there, yeah. it's a bit like a blow up, right? Except it might be, you know, it might be not a blow up at a smooth sub right here, something like that. So is there some decomposition of d of mw coming from ah. the d of n is one piece and you can describe the rest? Yeah, I mean, sure, there's, there's, there's certainly is the d of n uh, shows up there. But I don't know what what the complement would be. Uh, and there, there, there sure is uh, the composition like that, but uh, a priori, I I don't know what yeah what the complement should look like. Okay. Because in general, yeah. when you want to show that something is full, uh, you have here we're kind of finding stuff, but, but in order to show fullness, you, you have to you have to show this. There's nothing else you can find, or or, or that you have exhausted with, with everything. So so maybe we could find some guys in the in the orthogonal complement to n to be the n, but uh, I, I think to exhaust. May I ask you a question? Yeah. Hello? Yeah, sure. Uh, in, on the last slide, uh, you have a decomposition which has four, lo four rows, like, right? Is it correct? Yes. I mean, if I remember correctly, the mirror symmetry for this story is uh, kind of uh, some potential which has uh, 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 singular points, I mean, critical points, which are critical values, which are on the uh, real and the imaginary line, if you're imaginary. I, so I, is I, position kind of uh, compatible with I, this? I, Think so. It should be. I know that there is a conjecture for the mirror. Uh, uh, no, for the Fukaya category of this one. I don't know if for. I don't know about the mirror. But, um, but yeah, I, that, that's all I know. So I don't know how, how close or far people are from showing it on the Fukaya level. But you said in rows they are completely orthogonal, or what? What is it? Yes. 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 Maybe you're saying this should. I mean, if I remember from a talk by Galkin four or five years ago, there was, uh, I mean, you take the real line, you take the uh, line which is proportional to a complex to i, the square root of minus one, and there are some points on one, uh, on this four rows, so to speak. So maybe these four rows correspond to your decomposition. Four rays. Four rays. So yeah, right. Four rays. Yeah, then I, I want to look at that. Yeah, I rays correspond to rows. Yes, rays correspond to rows exactly. I'm just asking. Yeah. Okay. I I, I want I want to look at that. And I I, I didn't know what that. Okay. May, may I ask a question? Sorry. Uh, first, first. Uh, so you, um, you, when you have the decomposition on m, m omega, learn the the last step from descending that to n. Is that mm -hmm. something that's to push forward? Pull. Uh, it, it's the, the pullback. I mean, I mean, okay. You you want to show you have this. Uh, you have the, uh, these subcategories mm -hmm. on n and the way you show that they are uh they, they form similar semi-orthogonal blocks is by computing them upstairs so, so you you <coughs> pull them back and 
Uh, I, I see. So, so the pullback of the the founder downstairs, like Omega, correspond mm -hmm. to the like the the, the you know, so bundle upstairs on end. So that's the. Uh, I yeah, sort of. I mean, uh, the, the pullback of E uh, uh -huh. here is like the the universal bundle, well, twisted by a bundle line bundle, but still, I mean, it, it's it, you can still. I see. I see. Uh -huh. um, can you explain a little bit more about this, the, the semi orthogonal relation of this? Uh, uh, this ah, the, uh, uh, okay, so yeah, uh, yeah, there's there's a whole lot of uh, computations involved here because if I want to show that there's a the competition like this, I need to show that these guys are semi orthogonal to each other. So, why would this block be semi orthogonal to this block? Uh, well. Or, or, or any two blocks from right to left. Uh, uh, I guess I'm kind of hiding the boring stuff, but what you do is that uh, those morphisms from right to left, you compute them on an earlier MI and you do like a big induction uh, on, on, on those. And by the way, induction involves not only uh, Mm -hmm. Going back in on MI, but um, here, um, uh, I, when I use the special over solutions, I also go back in degree here. Because uh, if this degree was, by the way, this is why I want the degree to be the most to G minus one not equal, because mm -hmm. I'm going to run into places where I need to use this, whatever computations on, on smaller degrees. We have lambda, but minus two. So. And so in so Windows let, allows you to go from MI to MI minus one and use induction like this, so to speak, and then uh, also these special resolutions allow <laughs> you to work on uh, moduli spaces that have uh, smaller determinants. I see, I see. But um, is it clear that um, like in the semi also decomposition, which block come from like the contribution of MI or which coming from MI minus one, something like that? <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, roughly speaking, um, uh -huh. uh, the the alpha symmetric power uh, it comes from like m alpha. That's basically how, how it works. Uh huh. Okay. The, uh -huh. I mean, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, these uh, uh, these functors you can uh, from. Okay, I, I define them like. Uh, like here, like these functors you can define actually for any uh, for any MI you can define, it, but it starts being fully faithful at mm -hmm. alpha. So you can imagine a, 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 like being a C alpha starts appearing in M alpha and then it continues appearing on the subsequent ones. I see. Sounds. Um, uh, sir, a, a, a final remark is that I, I think the final morphism from M to N is a kind of projectivization. So, so the same also decomponent could be like described by the dual category projectization of the dual of that complex. But I don't know whether that will be helpful to the to prove prove that. Yeah, idea. right. Uh -huh. Yeah, because it's it's basically like a it's, it's a projective map. It's 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 yeah. generically you know one to one, but then on some. Uh, yeah, I think what yeah, what's, that, what's uh, the five the five yeah. space of sections. Of uh, the, the projectization of the space of sections. Of, uh, yeah, yeah. Even, I think uh, one, one could be able to show that it's projectization of a two term complex and learn that the ah. complement will be given by the, the dual category deal of that that two term complex. Dual, I mean. Uh, like, for example, you are writing it as a. Can be a problem. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This, um, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, the thing is, like, that orthogonal complement is, uh, I, 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 don't, I, I don't know if we already have to manage it. Yeah, I think if that fits in the picture, there are results to describe that, that orthogonal complement. Ah. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess maybe uh, let's thank the speaker again. And, and yeah, Aaron just shared the link.